Hi, Alec Duncan here from Child's Play Music. I'm going to show you how to make a very simple drum using ordinary packing tape as a drum skin. And uh, they actually sound pretty good. Here's a couple that I made earlier. So let's get on with it. To make your drum you're going to need three things. Some ordinary clear plastic packing tape, that's just the stuff that you use for taping up cardboard boxes, and a pair of scissors, and some sort of drum shell. Now you could use a large can, like a baby formula can, or a, a coffee can, something around that sort of diameter. From that sort of size and upwards works well. Um, if you want something a lot bigger, this is a large paint tin, and this would be ideal uh, for a drum. Or this PVC container, this was a mayonnaise container. And one thing about your drum shell is it needs to be fairly rigid, because there's quite a lot of pressure applied to the drum shell when you put the tape onto it. So it needs to be reasonably rigid, that's okay, but you don't want something that'll squash easily like a bucket. I'm going to be using this 250mm storm water pipe, um, that's 10 inches in the old measure. I just happen to have this lying around and it's ideal, nice and rigid. It's also quite resonant, which improves the sound of the drum. Another possibility is to use an old car tyre. You can make a Tyco drum using a car tyre. Uh, you would cover both sides of the, uh, of the tyre in that case, and they sound amazingly good. So what we're going to do is be putting a packing tape on in X's across the uh, drum shell. Just stick it about 50 millimetres down one side. Put it across. And then stretch it quite hard. Down the other side, cut it off. Don't worry about it being rippled, it doesn't matter at all. The next one goes at 90 degrees to the first one, and again, stretch hard. And so on. So you can see that I've gradually been building it up and covering the whole drum skin. There's one more to do here. Actually, there's quite a lot more to do yet. It's very important that you cover the whole area, that there are no holes, and in actual fact you want to make sure that there are actually at least two layers of tape in any area on here. So you're going to be covering this very thoroughly. So that's pretty much the finished drum. If you look at it you'll see that there are no holes left, and that in actual fact there are at least two layers of tape everywhere, even around the edge. Don't worry about it being thick in the middle, because obviously it's a lot thicker in the middle than it is at the edge. That actually makes it sound better. Lots of drums use thickenings at the middle, like tablers, to change the tone and to uh, increase the range of tones. One last thing that you need to do is flip your drum over, put your hand inside, press down the tape so that it's all stuck firmly together. You could cover it if you wanted to, but it's not necessary. And that's your finished drum. It actually sounds pretty good.
One thing about this sort of drum is it's important that the bottom end isn't covered. If you put it down on a flat surface, the air that's trapped inside stops the drum skin from vibrating and it's a very different sound. true for most drums and if you are going to use something like this to make your drum you either need to cut out the bottom or put a hole in the side to let the air pressure equalize when you hit it